994 again uh, we're doing this uh, for the duration of the government uh, shutdown and probably then some uh, so let's get a superintendent uh, John Fernandez of the uh, Guam Department of Education on the line morning John uh, good morning Chris uh, so I know you guys are rolling out the uh, grab-and-go meals I just want to get that info out to the people tell us what we need to know yeah so we um, you know we'll be serving uh, school school lunch basically uh, a bag grab-and-go meal uh, for all students on Guam, these are all students, which is uh, in, under this situation, it would be all kids from 0 to 18 years old uh, who want a meal, uh, whether you go to public school, private school, or you're in that 0 to 5 uh, category where, you know, where you're not at school at all, you're, you know, you're, you're maybe at home in a daycare, all, all kids are eligible, and all you need to do is go to one of our uh, 11 of our sites that will be serving meals today. And uh, you can line up. It's going to be a drive through operation. So stay in your cars, uh, drive up, uh, follow the instructions at the school gate. And what we'll do is we're going to have meals that are prepared and bagged, ready to go. And we will have staff who will just be handing it to the uh, to someone in the car and uh, taking a account of what, you know, the number of meals that are being served. And then we'll get you on your way. So uh, we, have, we have 11 sites. Uh, if I could just re- quickly go through the 11 uh, Ganya, John, take your time. Do it slowly if you have to. Okay, so uh, we have a Ganya Heights Elementary School, uh, a Stumbo Elementary School, uh, BP Carbolito Elementary School, FB Leon Guerrero Middle School, George Washington High School, uh, Inarahan Elementary School, M.U. Lujan Elementary School, John F. Kennedy High School, Jose Rios Middle School and PD, uh, Southern High School, and then Weddingo Elementary School. So those are the 11 sites that uh, we'll be we'll be starting off with uh, this week. Uh, this is these these schools were chosen because of the of their location, trying to cover northern, central, and southern Guam, and also uh, the the uh, we wanted uh, schools where the where the cafeteria uh, was located you know, close to the entrance of the school, so it could facilitate uh, the operation. And then we're gonna just see how operate you know how things go this uh, this first morning. Uh, first couple of days, uh, and then we'll, we'll make any adjustments uh, needed. But our goal really is, um, you know, really is to provide what we consider an emergency support to all of our families and all of our kids during this uh, th- during this really difficult period of time. Uh, we know that everybody needs to, you know, stay home and uh, you know just try to we try to get a handle on the on the spread of this uh, virus. Uh, on the other hand. Uh, we know that there are some there are families and there are kids out there in need of uh, food support, and we want to we want to be able to provide that level of support as well. So you know this is um, you know it's not something that we do lightly. Uh, we we have our staff about 100 staff that'll be out, you know probably around 10 per school, uh, to support the operation. We've you know provided them with gloves and and hair hair uh, hair net, nets or, or hats to to uh, add to the protective equipment. We've uh, gone over the safety protocols, the, the social distancing part of it, uh, how to you know, maintain distance and how to hand, how to safely distribute the the uh, the meals. Um, and again, we were doing this as a, you know as a drive-through operation. We don't want people congregating in, in large groups uh, waiting for their meals. So, again, we're going to do that this morning. We have support from uh, from our uh, from some Sodexo as our partner in, pre- in preparing the meals. I know that uh, we'll have. Uh, the mayor's offices and staff uh, kind of going by to help ensure that things are going smoothly. And then uh, I know AmeriCorps has offered a, at least one to two uh, of their volunteers to assist uh, as well. So that's what will be going on. It's, it's 11 o'clock in the morning uh, to, to 1 p.m. So there'll be a two hour window to uh, come by and get your uh, school meal. And, um, and again, if we have to make adjustments over the over the next couple of days, it really depends on who shows up and, and what the demand is out there. John, let, let, let me ask you real quick, John. If uh, let's say I'm a parent, public school kids, I want to come pick up uh, their lunches. I have three public school kids. They're going to stay home. Uh, is there going to be any? Do I need to bring any documents, or are you just going to take my word for it? Yeah, we're really going to, you know, at this stage, we're really going to be uh, going by the honor system uh, now. I, you know, we're, we don't want to encourage and, and have, uh, you know, whole families come through in the car right. uh, to come get their meals. We really, you know, this is a, a very unique situation. So in light of that, you know, we've uh, been working out uh, the, the system and the operation uh, and, and also working with our federal partners at U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, what we're really going to go by is, is good faith. Uh, we want we don't want to we want to encourage families to come and get their meals. We don't want the, you know them to 
to stay back because they can't bring all the kids at one time. Uh, we, we're not going to we're not going to be requiring the kids to be present. We just ask that the drivers uh, inform us of the number of meals and the schools they attend, so we can collect that for data purposes. And then again, we'll see how we go uh, on, on day one. We're producing about 8,000 bag bag meals today, which is about 60 percent of what we normally serve on an on an average day. Um, so, you know, we picked that number, um, you know, out of the blue. Basically, we just in many in school districts, we, uh, the numbers are going to come in lower than than the average uh, participation. So, right. uh, we're looking at that using that as a gauge. Um, if we have more meals uh, than than the number of people who show up. We've already worked it out with the mayors that we would like to, uh, right after uh, the, 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 the window closes for coming to the schools, uh, we've already worked it out with the mayors uh, to distribute remaining meals at uh, key areas in the village uh, where there are high areas of need. They might be facilitating this through the mayor's office uh, or another site. So we're already worked out that, um, that arrangement so that there aren't any wasted meals uh, out there. If there are to, uh, if there are not enough meals because uh, there's just you know, really huge demand, we're just going to uh, really ask the community to be patient with us this first day or two as we try to get those numbers right. Um, it really depends on who shows up. And again, we're encouraging people to, to come first, come first, serve. Uh, if there aren't enough meals, we'll just be you know organizing it that way. Mm-hmm. And then again, wish us luck this uh, first day as we try to get this right. How long are you guys anticipating to continue the grab and grow program? Is it just through the 30th or up until spring break? Well, right now, you know, we're in touch with the governor's office to make sure that uh, we're um, uh, we're ready for either situation. Uh, definitely for the for this week because uh, the the order you know closes the school system until March 30th. Mm-hmm. But we have always anticipated the possibility of going longer. And, um, and it looks likely that it might be an extension given the, the trajectory of the, the confirmed cases. So, uh, you know, as, as we plan this, we've worked with our food uh, suppliers and others to kind of gauge how much supplies we have. We, we, we uh, believe we can do this for about a month and a half just based on our current inventory. Um, and so that's going to be uh, enough to get us through uh, at least an intermediate uh, extension. John, what is for lunch uh, today? Yeah, I don't actually have that uh, uh, right now, and I will probably get that out to you. Um, these, these were based on our on our uh, existing menus, and, and there, there might be some modification to it. Right. But it's not a full out dinner. It is going to be based on um, on uh, the menus that we had because those are, those are the supplies that we've had in um, you know at the at the school sites and in our uh, supply chain. So uh, we can get that out to you uh, if that's if that's uh, helpful. Okay. All right. So again, the meal grab and go meal program, school meal program kicks into effect. This is the first day um, they're prepared. The Department of Education is prepared to continue this program at least uh, through the end of the month. And I guess they're in communication with the governor's office, right, uh, to see how how much longer uh, you'll proceed. Correct. Yeah, so again, we're ready to go through the end of this week and, you know, definitely um, able to serve uh, lunch at at these 11 sites. Um, In the event that there is an extension and we get to that, and we get to, uh, you know, get an understanding that this will go longer, what we're hoping to do is uh, potentially expand uh, to be able to serve the breakfast meal as well. Okay. Um, we didn't want to do that on day one and try to, you know, complicate the the operation. So, uh, but if that's the case, we're already contemplating expanding to provide uh, a school breakfast meal along along with the lunch meals, and then um, based on the number of based on the demand, um, we'll look at the sites where we're deli- where we're set up, and if it requires some modification uh, in terms of you know a- any areas that are underserved or uh, require us to expand service, uh, we'll do that as well, uh, especially if we're going to go longer than one week. Okay, and just for the people that are picking up their meals, um, they probably, or it should be mandatory that they wear masks as well to protect exposure right. from from everybody. Right, well, what's, what's happening right now, and you know, we're, de- we're definitely uh, taking the governor's executive order, uh, both of them into account. Um, you know, we, we, we want to run this as a drive through operation as some mm-hmm. of the businesses are, to minimize uh, to minimize contact uh, and, and uh, minimize the interaction. So basically, our school employees that are there again, we have about ten uh, per site are really instructed uh, just to grab the bag, to go to the car, and then hand the bag, and that's it. We're not no uh, no uh, hanging around, conversing, right. and all of that. They, we just hope everybody understands that we want to keep this quickly, 
moving. Keep Nobody gets out of your car. Nobody mm-hmm. waits outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll just hand it to you and move on. And that's how, and uh, we'll we'll hope that everybody is cooperative today in, in, in getting that done. Yeah, and that was that was just a comment from Charles McDonald who said make sure you mandate that they wear at the least a mask before getting their meals. So I just yeah, put that out there. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, we we urge everybody to maximize the, the, their, their protective measures. And we understand that masks right now uh, are being prioritized for the, our healthcare professionals who are doing that direct interaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know our nurses are out there, you know, especially out there on the front lines. So we do uh, want to make sure that we are in line with the guidance not to, you know, for people not to hoard masks that might be otherwise uh, provided to our uh, our frontline medical providers, mm-hmm. uh, but we do you know urge if you do have one, if you have gloves and other uh, measures, please uh, you know take those measures so that we can p- try to protect each other from the, the spread of the virus. Well, John, uh, we know you got uh, some meals to get out there, so thank you very much, and a uh, big shout out to all the uh, DOE uh, GDOE employees, uh, the staff, uh, you know the stakeholders from different agencies that are coming together uh, to do this very important work. No, absolutely. Thank, I, I do want to just echo that. Thank you to the staff. We did get the, we didn't force people to go out there. We've asked our staff who were willing to do this and be participants mm-hmm. in this important effort. And so everyone you see out there has been, uh, you know, someone who's raised their hand and said, we, we want to help. So uh, we want to thank all of the staff who are going to be out there today. Okay, John. Uh, thank you Thanks, so much. John. All right. Thank you, guys. There you go. John Fernandez, the superintendent of the Guam uh, Department of